Some businesses succeed, some don't. Then there are those that seem to have been around forever. The true entrepreneurial success story. How did they do it? What was their vision? What makes a success? In this special episode for Eye on Annapolis, we speak with the true success stories, those business owners that have been around for decades, learn from their successes and failures. Now, here's host John Fernay. We're here at 612 Third Street? Yes. There we are with the worldwide headquarters, which most people don't know, or many people may not know, of Spin Sheet, Prop Talk. Fish Talk, Start Sailing Port, Now, and Port, Port, Port Buck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys are a huge boating publisher here in Annapolis. Yeah. But the exciting part is is that you've been around, and I don't want to say forever because you're definitely not that old, but it's uh, – <laughs> Pretty old. Uh, but you, you guys have been a staple in the Chesapeake Bay boating community for 20 20- we, – uh, We launched Spin Sheet in 1995. So we're 24 years okay. right now, yeah. And uh, then we launched Prop Talk in 2005. And we Portbook, we didn't create. Portbook's been around for almost uh, over 40 years. But we purchased Portbook about 10 years ago. And then we just started Fish Talk two years ago. And, um, oh, and Start Sailing Now is, um, I think, eight or nine years old, which is our annual publication to try to get people into sailing. Now, okay, so Spin Sheet is the uh, the sailors. I don't want to say Bible, but it's 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 yeah. the it's the sailors magazine, and you you see this everywhere. It is distributed free. It's in marinas. It's in uh, like convenience stores that mm-hmm. are in bay centric areas for the yep. Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, and it's all about what's happening here on the Chesapeake Bay. It is. It's all sailing all the time. Uh, we distribute actually from Hampton, Virginia, up through Havre de Grace, Maryland. We do send to some places that are geographically challenged, um, up into Philadelphia. That's, that, and sounds, that sounds like a great euphemism. <laughs> yeah. Well, for people who are off the bay and can't pick it up for free, we will do subscriptions. Um, and we do go to some West Marines up and down the East Coast for the snowbirds, for people who go down to Florida in the winter or, or up to New England in the summer. But yeah, we, we cover racing and cruising and all the things that that are going on on the bay totally from a sailing perspective everyone who's writing for us is a sailor they sail the chesapeake but most of us were born and raised here on the chesapeake so what was the genesis bias what 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 in 1995 did you figure and and i don't think i we introduced her we just talked about this is mary uwinson who is the, <laughs> the, the founder and the publisher and the uh editor and the the, the vacuum cleaner operator and everything else here. absolutely yeah um, well, my friend Dave Gandell and I started Spin Sheet, and we sailed together, or we raced together on a J35, and there actually, there used to be a publication called Rags Magazine that was a free publication for the whole East Coast. It was based here in Annapolis, and the idea of a free sailing publication was a really good one. Their idea of trying to make it the whole East Coast, it sort of wasn't big enough to be national, and it wasn't small enough to be local, and so... They failed. Um, And Dave had worked for Rags, and I did some ad sales for them briefly before they failed. Um, While I was, I had been a teacher and I was trying to decide what I was going to do next, had taught for three years and um, thought I wanted. Yeah, well, I loved (laughs) teaching, but I was, you know, I was a minor early 20s and thought, I don't know if I'm going to teach forever. I want to try sort of going, maybe wearing a suit, which is funny because I, I haven't needed a suit since. Right. But I dressed up more as a teacher. We we were inspired by my dad. He'd just gone on, on his own and started his own law firm with a partner. And he said, you guys could make your own magazine. But we knew we wanted to keep it local, Chesapeake Bay, so that we could really cover the faces and the boats and the people and the places. Um, Rags, which was a great publication, they just tried to do too much in too small of a um, publication. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, And, and it was just well-received when you launched? Absolutely. Like, from the get-go, um, the community was super supportive. I mean, there were some of our, our first advertisers were terrific. We walked in and told them we wanted to make a magazine. And, you know, did they want to be part of it? Oh, yeah. And we said, oh, and by the way, we need you to pay for the ad up front so we can pay the printing bill. And <laughs> they were great. They really they embraced us. They, they believed in having something for the sailing community here. And it, it was because of that support. And then we just got out to – went to rendezvous and regattas and showed it to people – we distributed it for free, and people really embraced it. 
lots of people just they they saw the value in what we were doing and also um i think we've made a big difference for the sailing community to have something to you know the internet was just getting started there so there there was then there wasn't a, a way for sailors to get sailing information especially not locally um the capital had a good sailing page for Annapolis. But it didn't do much for Rock Hall or it didn't do exactly. much for anything south of here or yeah. e- even West River or, or whatnot there as well. Yeah. Because you do – like you said, you do get local and uh, – you know, your definition of local and mine are two different things. I mean, I'm more Anne Arundel County and you're the Bay, but I get that. But I mean, you know, you get in there and you get the faces and the names and the people and you and, and you get the stories um, and, and the tales of the Chesapeake Bay. And really over the last 24 years, you've been able to, you know, create a, a sort of an encyclopedia. Oh, yeah. Of – of everything that's that's really sort of gone on. I mean, you you cover you know you cover safety. You obviously cover some you know new builds and uh, and, yeah. and whatnot that goes on there. And uh, one of the offshoots of this is your crew parties or your your, yeah. cr- your crew matches, which is uh, perfect because if you don't own a boat and you would like to own a boat or maybe check it out, you can you offer these crew parties. Up and down the Chesapeake Bay. Yeah. Um, and it's just sort of match.com for pe- <laughs> it, people with Helly Hansons and, <laughs> and, and Docksiders. It is. I mean, once, you, once you're a sailor and you've kind of met people in the sailing community, you can always find somebody to go sailing with. But if you're new to sailing or new to the area, you know, short of going and walking the docks and trying to introduce yourself to people, which is hard. And creepy. Um, yeah, and a little creepy. You know, people might think you're a little bit odd. Um, our crew parties, so we do four. We do one in Hampton, one in Solomon's, one in Annapolis, and one in Baltimore. And we literally put stickers on people that say, looking for a boat or looking for crew. And we put pictures of the boats up on the wall, and we try to introduce people just to get them into And it's for cruisers and racers. And as you said, it's a matchmaking, but for going sailing. And, I mean, that's not to say there aren't some people who have ended up being couples out of sailing. I sure. Mean, I met my husband at a regatta party. That's, wow. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I think that um, we really believe that everybody feels better if they get out on the water. And we want it to be accessible. And there are a lot of ways to get out on the water without spending a lot of money. But to somebody who's not in the community, they may not know that. So our crew parties are start sailing now. In fact, in our um, in Spin Sheet every month, we have a start sailing now column. And we just try to play up all of the events that are open to the public to try to get more people out there. Well, it is. I mean, the, so- the socializing doesn't necessarily have to happen on the boats, obviously it does. Right. So it's uh, you know we can we can be a little bit of a landlubber and and do it as well. And and those are also open to people of varying degrees of experience or non experience. Absolutely. And when you go to our crew parties, I mean, you see people ranging from their twenties to literally to their eighties. People who've never been on a boat to people who have done transatlantics. I mean, you just get a little of everything. Well, it sort of um, ties into your um, Start Sailing Now publication, mm-hmm. which. Uh, you seem to be just this giant cheerleader in blue jeans and, and a Patagonia <laughs> sweatshirt, but to, to you know, for sailing and the, and the Chesapeake Bay. And yeah. I mean, you've mentioned this three or four times in the ten minutes that we've been speaking about you know getting people together and getting them out there sailing. Now we've got the start sailing now, and let's get people out there. And I think that that's that's really good. The start sailing now, and, and this is a new publication that I didn't realize that you guys had. But I mean, it appears to be a uh, okay. Now I'm interested in this. Right. What now? Yeah, so um, it, we so we created this. Actually, uh, it was sort of a brainchild of Dave Gundell, who okay. and um, Molly Winans, who is mm-hmm. our editor, and everyone on our team got together and we we talked about well, what does somebody need to know if they don't know anything about sailing? You know, what do they need to know about what kind of shoes you wear, what kind of gloves you wear, what kind of clothes you wear, where you would meet people, what to, kinds of questions to ask about finding the right sailing school or community sailing. And so we have a website. It's startsellingsnow.com. It's part of our spin sheet site. But we also do this free publication. It's 24 pages. It's distributed all over the Chesapeake Bay. I mean, it does. It talks about stuff like what kind of words people use for sailing. Right. You know, what does it mean when, when a boat is heeling over? Right. What's jibing? What's tacking? Because there's this weird sailing language that if you don't know it, it's a little intimidating. I know, I know. If you went off of, like, uh, wedding crashes, I mean, you'd come yeah. out with the yachting clock and, you know. Right. And, and all, all these words and had no idea what was what was going on or Judge Smales at the uh, – Exactly. Shack, you know, <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield, you scratch my anchor. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's sort of like the way that I feel if I go to a really formal dinner party. It's like, oh, my goodness, am I going to pick up the wrong fork? 
or am I going to not know which order you do something? And we don't want people to feel that way about sailing because it's not that the language is meant to be exclusive, but it sure doesn't mean anything to someone who's never been on a sailboat. If That's you true. say, grab that sheet and grind it in. Well, what yeah, maybe. Mean? Yeah, <laughs> you know, right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, that, this that, is not quite what I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's not meaning to somebody, oh, that rope that's lying there, wrap it around <laughs> that winch, the winch and, which you may not even know what a winch is right. if you've never been on a boat and never done anything with construction. Right. So, yeah. What's the best way to get out on, for somebody new to get out on the water that you've seen after all of your experience? I mean, obviously, is it the, the going to a party and just hooking up with somebody? Is it maybe, I know the Schooner Woodwind does mm-hmm. the, the public yeah. tours. Is that yeah. a, is that, you know, a good, good taste of it or? I think anything like the Schooner The Whitbread. Wood- <laughs> yeah, 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 or the yeah, go to the Bob Motion Race. Um, I think things like the schooner with when any day sailing kind of opportunity, um, for example, at the um, Annapolis Spring Sailboat Show and the Annapolis um, Boat Show in the fall, they have something called First Sail, and it's an inexpensive way to go out. They, they teach you in the classroom for about, I think, 45 minutes, and then you go out for about an hour sail. I think getting a little taste by getting a ride on a sailboat, do you like the way that it feels? Does it, does it scare you a little bit? Is it interesting? Do you think it's boring? Is a good start because um, – and there are lots of um, sort of day sailing boats you can go out on. I think in an hour or two you can get a little bit of a feel for it. I think that's a great thing. Chesapeake Region Accessible Boat and Crab, they do mm-hmm. free sails where you could go try sailing. Some of the local um, community sailing programs up in Baltimore, they have the Downtown Sailing Center. So I think that's an awesome way to do it. Coming to our crew parties, terrific way to do it. But you have to find somebody at that party who will take a complete beginner. And if you're not sure about it, that you know you don't want to sign up for a week long cruise. Try it for a very short period of time, True. and then if you like it, there. Are, um, I think sailing lessons at a sailing school are spectacular because a friend who's teaching you sailing, they may not remember all the things that they know to tell you. True. And that the sailing schools have a protocol, and they remember to tell you how to wear a life jacket, what it feels like if you fall in the water, or what to do, that the boom's going to cross and might hit you in the head when you're tacking. If you're just going out with a bunch of friends That's for a Friday nature. afternoon, they might not think of that. So, True. I mean, it's a great way to do it, but I, right. I, I'm a big believer in sailing right. schools. Yeah. Prop talk. And that, yeah. came, that came out, and you, and you said, okay, well, we did this with sailboats, and we've got those irritating little people with motors out on there that we need to... <laughs> We need to talk with them. Yeah. Um, well, it's funny because I would always describe myself as a sailor, yet um, I spent way more time on powerboats as a kid because we could go wakeboarding and water skiing sure. and tubing. And so as soon as we were old enough to drive powerboats, that's what we did. And we could run our powerboat up the river to you know, go into downtown Annapolis and go to the market house. That mm-hmm. was a big thing that we could do before we could drive cars. But there in the Chesapeake Bay area, there are roughly nine powerboats for every sailboat. And the Chesapeake Bay Area has a lot of sailboats compared to the rest of the world. I mean, there are way more powerboats than there are sailboats. And um, people tend to – it's easier to get into powerboating. People tend to view it as more like a car. You know, you turn the key and you start going. Sailing has a bigger barrier to entry. And um, so we wanted to expand. We wanted to reach um, the powerboaters. One of the segments we have of Spin Sheet is we have a club directory. So if you have a kind of sailboat, like a hunter sailboat or a Beneteau sailboat, there's a Beneteau club and a hunter club. And what we found is that by promoting their events and writing about them, those groups grew bigger. And people who boat in company do more boating. You sure. know, it, it's you've, you've signed up to meet somebody. You don't say, oh, I have too much housework. No, I'm meeting that person. I'm going to do that on Saturday. And so we wanted to establish the same thing for power boating. Um, and prop talk was a ton of fun. It's a totally different language again, mm-hmm. you know. And we went to powerboat rendezvous, and they have things like poker runs and <laughs> and um, a lot of raft ups. And powerboaters have a much larger range that they can get to over on a weekend. Sure, you know, on a sailboat, if you are to if you leave Severna Park on your sailboat for the weekend, you might go to St. Michael's for the weekend. You you know, if you're really adventurous, you might go up to Baltimore for the weekend. Right. But a powerboater, you, you know, in two hours, you can be in you Baltimore. Can get so much yeah. further and so it's been it was really fun for us to start something new now does prop talk cover the same area it as does. okay so they're side by side 
next to each other and all the distribution points from... In a lot of the distribution points. I mean, there's some areas that are very powerboat heavy where we wouldn't put spin sheet, and there's some you know, sailing, sailing clubs heavy, right? where we wouldn't right. put prop talk. And, you know, if we go to the liquor store that's near the marina, we probably have both of them. Right. Port book. I mean, what is that? I mean, you, I know you said that you had acquired that. Mm-hmm. And that's a... Um, it's a it's a marine services guide. We actually have a port book in Annapolis, and we have one in Newport, Rhode Island, which is sort of the only thing that we do that's not on the Chesapeake Bay. Okay. And, and that's because when we purchased it, it had an, that they had a Newport, Rhode Island one. Um, the Annapolis port book story is fun. The Fawcett Boat Supplies used to be at City Dock mm-hmm. downtown. And there was a woman who worked there who was meeting a friend at McGarvey's for lunch. And she was 10 minutes late to lunch to meet Sandy Squire, who ended up starting Port Book. And she said, I'm so sorry, I'm so late. But if I had a dollar for every time I had to draw a map for a sailor who's come into town of how to get somewhere and where they can do their laundry and where they can buy their groceries. And Sandy said, wow, we should just make a book or something. And they did. And so Port Book has fold-out maps of Annapolis of all the, you know, where you can bring a dinghy into the dock, where you can get your laundry done, who does bottom painting, who will fix your rig while you're in town. It's got taxi cab information. It's got restaurant information. So it's basically a local marine services guide for Annapolis and the Eastern Shore. So it goes as... The brilliant yeah. idea started at McGarvey's? Started at McGarvey's by somebody from Fawcett's. You know, you know who, um, what other brilliant idea started at McGarvey's? What's that? Uh, Senator John Astle. Oh, yeah. His, his, his career. He was, career he was, he was, he was, he was there. He was there drinking, and somebody said, hey, you know, you ought to run for Yeah. And he's like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> well, you know, McGarvey's is a good place. We've ended a lot of um, – I played hockey at Navy in their adult league, and we would go to McGarvey's after the hockey games. It's, oh, with, with – We like McGarvey's. With, without a doubt. And yeah. they've, got, they've got some of the best burgers in town. Yeah. They, and they, the they best really bartenders, do. some of them. Yeah. They do. And I'm so glad – you mentioned Market House. I'm so glad that it's open again. Oh, it's terrific. It's, it's such a good resource. And it's a good resource for visiting boaters. And they're trying to have – we've talked to them, actually, about making sure – they have some of the things that boaters need. Provisionings. Yeah. And the harbor master gives port book to visiting boaters. So that if visiting boater comes to town and goes, you know, I got a problem with my prop. Here you go, port book. They've got three different prop guys listed in here. You know, that's, that's it's to make it easier. Right. Yeah. You've grown from, okay, so you said initially it was you and Dave that had started this. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming that when you started it, it was you and Dave hustling out on the street. Everything, yeah. You know, running to the bank, making sure the check cleared the bank, and then running to the printer to make sure that the printer had. Yeah. And now. Driving the distribution. Uh-huh. Dave did the writing. I sold the ads. Yeah. We roped my mom in very early. She became a distribution driver just a couple of months after we started. My, <laughs> distribution was, driver. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like code for a wombat. Yeah. You know? Well, now she. She's, now she's copy editor, manages our distribution, manages of our classifieds. Well, how, how, how big have you have you grown now at this point? I mean, there are 13 got, of us now. What's that? We have 13 people now. 13 full-time. people here. And, and then we have 25 freelance writers that write articles for us. Mm-hmm. We have seven or eight distribution drivers okay. uh, who drive the magazines all over the bay for us. Uh, we've got some photographers mm-hmm. who are really talented. And, the, you know, and then we have lots of friends of the program. Right. When do they come out? Well, um, and when when does somebody expect to see a new issue? Sure. We also have Fish Talk magazine, which we started oh. um, two years ago, and Lenny Ruda is our editor of that. And he actually came to us and said, "I want to make a magazine." He'd been writing for us for Prop Talk for years, and he said, "I want to make a fishing magazine." And you guys know how to do this. You want to partner up? And we we didn't. I mean, I met with him. I hadn't gotten out of the parking lot before I'd made my first call, which was to my husband to say, uh, "Okay, if we do this," and second call back to the office and by the time I was back here we had thumbs up all the way around so fish talk comes out the third week of the month no is that is that seasonal or is that year round it's year round too um there are a lot of print publications out there that have gone you know six times a year ten times a year we find that our readers read all year round and in the winter time they're doing less boating so they have more time to read we we distribute a little bit fewer in the winter just because we're distributed for free and people find us when they're going to their boat but yeah so that um in in the winter time we talk about the different fishing you can do in the winter or getting ready for the the spring trophy season yeah so that comes out the third week of the month spin sheet comes out the first of the month and prop talk comes out the 15th of the month so okay we've got three three weeks of the month we have a new issue so you've got you've got a got a, a, a continual deadline we do we do and then we throw in port book and 
start sailing now and crew just, parties. Just between your spare time. Boat shows, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you guys are also a big face at the boat shows, whether it yeah. be the fall or the spring. And Annapolis mm-hmm. does have the power boat and the physical boat show in the fall in October. And then the spring boat show rolls into Annapolis in April. Yes. And, I, I, and they also have a boat show over in Kent Island over yep. at uh, the Bay Bridge Marina. Yes. And I'm sure you're there, too? We are. Yeah. Yeah, we have booths at all of them. Is, is that good for you? You know, it, it, we love the boat shows. It's a ton of fun because it's, it's when we get to connect with all of our readers. Mm-hmm. I mean, they can always stop in here anytime and see us, but, you know, that happens if someone happens to be an eSport. But most of our readers go to the boat shows. They stop and chat with us. They share story ideas with us, which is invaluable. You know, if we don't know about it, we can't write about it. Sure. So, yeah. What's the future look like? What Are you, are you uh, doing – Airplane talk next? Or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we laugh or, all the time um, about what what our you know what we'll do with that fourth week of month. I think I think we're we, there's a new rule at my house. It came into being about a year and a half ago that we're not um, starting or buying any businesses without giving one up. And I really like all the ones we have, so we're not uh, we're not starting anything new in the n- near future. We are within each. Um, area we're offering more and more things you know we're, we're doing a little bit more with video we obviously have facebook and twitter and instagram and our websites and we're um we have a i guess a division of our company called spf 360 and we offer marketing services to our customers and so we're doing a lot more of that just many of our many of the companies we work with aren't big enough to have their own marketing department so we're helping them with collateral, helping them with the, doing um, their outreach to their customers, helping them with writing content, that kind of thing. SPF, is that a sun protection factor or spin prop and fish? <laughs> or sailing powerboats and fishing. It yeah. really, um, it you know, we, we planned that in 1995, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then it's fun because of the SPF, you know, sun protection factor and 360, 360 degrees. So we got you covered. You're here in Eastport. You've been here almost from the beginning? Yeah. We started in, um, we had one computer at my house, one computer at Dave's house, and we would go back and forth with, member floppy disks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, I, I, um, I think I've got a coaster that I use. Exactly. Um, to put it all together. and But we moved into, we were originally over, um, I don't know if you remember Patton's Pub, but Patton's Pub became the Boatyard Bar and Grill. Yep. We were at that end of 4th Street. And then in 2001, we moved over to this end. We're on the back creek side. We, we needed um, more space to fit our team. So we've been in these offices for 18 years. You guys are the salt of the bay, if you will. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you, you, you're you're not a transplant. I, I'm a transplant. Okay. I've only been here 20 years. I mean, you're born born and raised here. Yeah. Uh, born and raised in these waters. You know, Dave, who is the co-founder, is as as well. Yeah. I know that you know your husband is an avid sailor. Um, He's a transplant. Yeah. We, well, yeah. We well, imported him. He re- he yeah. redeemed himself when he jumped in and saved that person in the or when he when he did the CPR for that person that had a heart attack on City Dock though. He's uh, yeah yeah. Uh, well, he's a keeper. We'll, get, we'll, yeah, get, we like we'll give that. him credit there. That's the thing that's really beautiful about this is that it is spin sheet prop talk, fishtail, fishtails. I want to say fishtails. Maybe we should have named it fishtails. No, it, that you was need, all, you, fish need to develop, you need to develop a kids like program or something. Fishtails like was already taken, so okay. fish talk. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Um, but I mean, you're you're the real deal. That's that's the, that's the beauty of it that I've I've seen. Um, I do read spin sheet. I'm not a sailor. Um, I. I am a reform power boater. Yeah. And I, you know, I realized that other people's boats were a lot more appeal, appealing to me. We, uh, you know, we're big believers in OPB. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's funny that you bring up the, you know, whether you're born and raised here or a transplant. I'm a big believer that the important thing is that you're part of the community and part of the culture and part of, and that you're an a real boater. Some of the people on our team have lived in an, in this area for five years. They came from somewhere else, but they boat all the time. Some of us, I mean, have been here forever. My my dad was raised on the Severn River, but every single person in my office is a boater, whether they fish or cruise their powerboat or their kayaker. And we got some stand up paddleboard yoga right. people in here, you know, sailors. But we think it's really important that we we all do this. It is the real deal. But I am. Um, I don't like to make the distinction between whether somebody's been here forever or not. I think it's important that that Spin Sheet has been here for 20-something years, and we have a lot of history. Like, we we know what's going on on the Bay. As you said, we're a little bit of an encyclopedia at this point. People call all the time, and they come with, call with some random questions. But we usually know who to ask to get the answer. Right. Because we're not, you know, some of us have been here for 50-something years. Everybody's really entrenched, and, and we want to see it. 
be better. And I, I mean, well, I'm really fortunate. I work with a really great team of people. But we count on the wall how many days we're out on the water. And and I've got to give you props, too. A couple of years ago, you guys had the most outstanding April Fool's Day joke. <laughs> uh, where, and it was on your Facebook page, I believe, that you threw out that uh, Taylor Swift was in town looking to purchase a home. Yeah. And uh, the world went crazy. They did. And, and it's great. My aunt and uncle actually live right next door, right near. They can see the property that was for sale. Like if they walk down to the water where uh-huh. they live, they can see that property. And um, my cousin in New York was taken in by it and called. She's like, you need to, you know, check about this. And they were like, <laughs> yeah, April Fool's. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was very funny. I think, I think the way you got caught up on that is that one of the internet sleuths, because there are zillions of them, discovered that the shadow of her outside of was resales <laughs> was – not quite in line with the time that the picture was reportedly taken. You know, yeah. he, he was like, "No, the shadow would have been deflected this way." And it was like, "But it was a, it was a great, it was a, it was one of the best, one of the best ones." So yeah, it was a ton of fun. Kudos to Prop Talk and Spin Sheet and Fish Talk. Yeah, got it right. There you go, Fish Talk. Yeah. <laughs> I did well. Congratulations on twenty four years. Are you doing anything special for your twenty fifth? You know, I, we we haven't even talked about that at all because we've been so busy with getting Fish Talk established Mm -hmm. and all that. And um, we had a lot of fun with our 21st when Spin Sheet became legal drinking age. And You guys didn't drink underage, did you? Oh, (laughs) Spin Sheet didn't. No, no. But Prop Talk will also be turning 15 that year. So, uh, you know, we'll do something. It's 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 kind of fun when you have five publications going. There's always something to celebrate. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to it. And uh, Mary Ewanson, congratulations on a incredible and continuing career with your publications that are really the uh, the, the the bible and the guide for anybody that's out on the water in the Chesapeake Bay, um, Thank you. Virginia to Virginia to yeah. I guess Delaware to Delaware. Yeah, exactly. Um, and anybody who comes to visit, absolutely. And make sure you check them out if you're at the boat shows. Uh, look for them. They you always have a big booth there and smiling faces. Usually, you have some refreshments. I believe we too. do. We do. We all well. We always have free water. We always have snacks, and there's always something under the table for anybody who needs something. <laughs> it's the best way to be. Yeah. Thanks for listening to this special podcast for I Am Annapolis. Please be sure to visit IamAnnapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinions. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the I Am Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you your local news direct to your phone or tablet every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Subscribe on iTunes or Google Play.